Spray grazing is an effective tactic to reduce annual broadleaf weeds with short seed viability, but only if the application of herbicide and grazing is right. If we achieve this, we can improve the grass and clover content, extending the productive life of a sown pasture. As the name suggests, spray grazing involves the combination of herbicide and grazing. This technique uses a sub-lethal rate of a phenoxy herbicide to broadleaf plants while they are actively growing, followed by intensive grazing. The plants respond by temporarily drawing sugars from the roots and the crown into the leaves. The herbicide makes the plant more palatable and accessible to grazing, as well as depleting the reserves the plant uses after grazing to regrow new leaves. Timely and intensive grazing is critical to the success of this technique. Avoid grazing seven to 10 days after spraying to allow the herbicide response to occur in the weed. Grazing should then commence at stocking rates high enough to remove the target weeds within about two weeks. After this time, the plant reserves will start slowly returning to the root system. The smaller the weed and the less feed on offer when grazing commences, the easier this is to achieve. The aim is to apply herbicide as early as possible as this reduces the rate required and the amount of weed that must be removed by grazing. However, this needs to be balanced against the maturity of the companion clovers. To avoid significant damage, at least three trifoliate leaves need to have grown on subclover when applying MCPA amine and eight leaves when using 2,4-D amine on white clover. The ideal size of the target weed is up to the size of your hand. Larger than this, the additional rate of herbicide may result in significant damage to the clovers. Spraying too late in the season can also have negative impacts. Firstly, subclover seed production can be compromised. And secondly, there is insufficient time for the desirable species to grow into the gaps left by the decaying weeds before the season finishes. Pasture regrowth will temporarily be affected because leaf area is lower than desirable. Bare ground will increase and the clover will also be stunted for a while. Expect lower than normal pasture growth for the following two months after treatment. Remaining plants need an extended period of rest to recover. The next grazing should occur once the perennial grasses have reached at least three new leaves per tiller. Long term, the clover will recover, producing runners that populate bare areas, leading to a higher overall clover content. The intent of spray grazing is to remove broadleaf weeds to create space for desirable species to expand. If those desirable species are not present, bare ground will eventually be populated by other weeds. Therefore, the decision to use this technique should also take into consideration existing plant population. Spray grazing is a well-researched and applied practice, but the key to its success lies in the timing of herbicide application and the timing of grazing. Applying herbicide too early will damage seedling subclover and too late will be less effective on capeweed because of its maturity. Herbicide use alone rarely gives long-term control unless attention is given to thickening up the desirable species, using grazing and fertility management, which reduces the gaps these annual weeds can invade into. Southern Farming Systems on behalf of MLA are developing resources on pasture intervention strategies and techniques that will assist you in revealing your pasture's full potential. To access more information on spray grazing and other pasture-related resources, visit the MLA or Southern Farming Systems website.